beautiful mangrove crab farm. Another day, another journey. This is the Northern Marianas College Cooperative Research Extension and Education Service Center for Aquaculture Development. I want to learn about their aquaculture and natural resources program, particularly the vertical mangrove crab farming. I'm Daniel Calvo, research assistant too. So what we have here is a microalgae or to be more specific, it's Isochrysis galvana, iso T for short. Um, you can see, if you come closer, they're all like in different colors. But this just means that the darker it is, the richer in population it is for the ISO crisis. And we want it to get dark. That way we can transfer to a five gallon that we call carboy. And then it's gonna, the same process, it's just you have to make it uh, repopulate. Of course, you have to give it its nutrients. Once it repopulates, as you, when you put it in there, it's gonna get darker. The one in the middle is darker than the, the one on the right. So the one on the right will need more time compared to the one in the middle. It's almost ready. If it can get darker, that's great. Usually uh, after four or five days, you can transfer it out into those cylinders mm -hmm. you saw outside in the hatchery. And then the process again of making sure they repopulate happens until uh, they're dark. We feed them to the zooplankton, the copepods, the microscopic animals that I was mentioning earlier. Microalgae, from microalgae to uh, uh, zooplankton, and then zooplankton, and we give it to the fingerling stain. Until we get our, you know, our eggs. Yeah, so this is the larvae we really can. Originally, it should have like the baby, the fingerlings in here, and this would have the, the microalgae or the copepods in there. So we're feeding copepods to the tiny fingerlings. And now, as I was saying, now the carboys from the microalgae, when they get darker, they'll just go into the cylinders, and the process repeats of when it gets darker. But right now, this is just the uh, mixture, getting it ready for the, the plant, the microalgae in there. So there's nothing yet, and we're downsizing. So we're just keeping them in the five gallons. So there's two of these. So originally we have, this is an LRT, there's nothing in there. And then this is where we just keep the Tarakiti for now, until we get all the together. This is the Kopi pot tank, the one from the microalgae. Then we put it in here, the Kopi pot tank, the microscopic animals, zooplankton. This is what we'll be feeding in this LRT, the larvae rearing, when there's baby fish. Mm -hmm. This looks like air. Yeah, so this is where we keep our fish that uh, are supposed to produce the eggs. And then from there, we do the larval rearing process, getting them from egg to uh, adult. This is just a quarantine tank. So when we get new fish, we'll place them in here. And whatever bacteria or uh, sickness that they have, we'll let it like, come out. And then after they're done, we we'll transfer them to the rest of the somewhere the group of the fish. Yeah. This is 13, yeah, 13. And some of these have been here since uh, Yeah, since Solaroa. Originally, this is where the eggs are supposed to go. And like when we, when we lift it up, we'll see the eggs. But since August of 2023, we have not had any eggs from these fish. Why? It's just because they're most likely. Because we even tried to, how do you say? Change their diet. Change their diet to make them produce, like adding paprika. But it's, you know, to no avail. This is where we culture the roadsters. Uh, right now it's in here because our boss wanted us to uh, like, uh, like slow down on producing more. So we just use the five gallon bucket. But uh, right now there's like about like maybe like 50, 50 million because yeah, they're so tiny. So when it's in here, uh, it's like the population can go from like 20 million to like 50 million in like 3 days. So it's very fast. So we try to slow down and put it in here because we don't have any eggs to feed it to. Mm -hmm. These are the boxes that the crabs will go in. Uh, right now we're looking to have about 500 boxes uh, running. Uh, but we're going to set up at least uh, almost a thousand boxes. Right now we're still working on getting it all set up and everything here. 
So we haven't uh, gotten it uh, running yet. And we're still waiting for the crabs to order them from, I think, Philippines, right? Yeah, yeah two possible vendors. Yeah. yeah, either Philippines or Ponte. Yeah. So, yeah, this is this is just the basic, uh, this is the inlet where the water goes in, then the outlets are on the other side. Cross ordered a thousand of these. And 500 for Rhoda and Tin each. The generator back there, that it is just uh, helps pump up our water on the underwater well, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just salt water. And this is 6,000. 6,000, you can hold 6,000 gallons of water. Base, you see? So when the water that comes from under the ground, uh, wind passes through so oxygen can enter. Finish. Yeah. So it's still, it's actually still full. It's soaked water? Yeah. And when it comes out, the, the salinity, it's like a, right like now it's at 40. I measured at 40 ppm. And that was the space, you see that? Like, that's what I'm talking about coming from under underground. That you'll be seeing like a faucet draining. Wind, the wind will be passing through so it can, the water can be filled with oxygen receive our water we don't need to go to the beach we're very fortunate to have it just underground and when we do the salinity for the fish the water parameters it's about 40 ppm so it's pretty high also when you think about it it's hot and the water is just evaporating inside and that's why it's like pretty salty in there but it's it's been good so far we haven't had any issues it's from like 35 to 40 the salinity